you know, earlier this year, and we got after those guys, and we were able to turn them over. It just, you know, certain situations, I thought we made some mistakes down the stretch where we didn't get over zones, and you know, we were careless with the basketball that obviously cost us the game. What you honestly what do you think of those uniforms? What you think of when you heard sleeves and, and then he saw them? You know, the first time I heard about them, I thought it was an awful idea. And then I, I thought about it. All of our guys, if you look at it, their undergarment is obviously has sleeves on it. So I think it's a great idea. I mean, when I first heard it, um, you know, Adidas guy's great. You know, he'll, he'll typically call me and say, uh, you know, we got some new uniforms. Can you get this by coach? <laughs> and uh, so, you know, I was the first to see it, and I said, you know, I think it's a great idea. And, um, you know, I think Kareem Richardson backed it up because, um, you know, if you remember back in the day, Evansville wore those jerseys with the sleeves on it, and obviously he played there. But, you know, I'm going to miss um, the infrared. I mean, I, you know, I like this red. It's, it's cool colors. It's great. But I thought the infrared was a great pop for us. You guys definitely got the best end of the deal, though. Have you seen all the other units? I have not. I haven't seen them all. But you I need by far some better. <laughs> well, you know, red is beautiful. So, <laughs> what have the players said? You know, they haven't said much. Uh, you know, we don't believe it or not. Kids don't talk about this stuff until it happens. They're, these kids are in the moment. So when we pull them out and we start putting them on, they'll start talking about them. But right now, our focus is just obviously just on Syracuse. Do you practice? You don't get to practice in or you know. in the uniform? Yeah. No, we don't. You know, but the, all our kids wear the Adidas undergarments. Is it as much the same? It's the same thing. Absolutely. Okay. And what they've done is instead of having two pieces, like we would wear a shirt and then a jersey over, it's just one piece, which is, which is a unique idea. Yeah. Yes. How much has Russ's game changed maybe since the last series? Seems like different areas of emphasis. You know, I, I think Russ's game has changed because, as you guys have seen, he's made an effort to pass the ball more. And, um, you know, and, and, and Coach is constantly on him about, hey, certainly if we're going to go a long ways and we're going to have a chance to win the Big East, we're going to have a chance to win the Big East tournament, Russ, you got to be a passer, score when you need to, but you got to find people. And I think he's making an effort. Now, obviously, you guys know Russ. You've covered him for years. So, you know, it's not going to happen overnight. Uh, but he's trying. You know, he's doing a better job with that, trying to get people involved. How tough is it? So if he's going to play at the next level, that's pretty much the game he's got to play, right? Well, I, I think if, um, you know, for him, uh, at his size, if he does have a chance to play at the next level, you're absolutely right. He's got to change some parts of his game and, and be more facilitator and score second. As a coach, though, how tough is it to change a kid's habit? You know, I mean, he's been a scorer his whole life, and all of a sudden, you know, now we're saying you got to pass the ball over. For, for Kevin Keats, really tough. For Rick Pitino, it won't be tough. <laughs> 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 for me, it would be real tough. Coach will get him a change. He's not like he's a good passer. I mean, some of the passes he makes when, when he gets in the lane, and he's, he's got kind of a sense for it, too. Yeah, no, no. He is. Uh, when Russ Smith decides, uh, when he goes into a game and he decides that he's going to be a facilitator, he's going to find his teammates and all that, he's a, one of the best passers that we have on our team. And, um, you know, certainly, you know, as valuable as he is to us because of, of scouting and he draws so much attention, you know, if he becomes a passer, we become a better team. Is it tough? Do the other guys kind of take a different mindset? Because, you know, during a game when you got the ball, you maybe be thinking about, yeah. you know, because you think he's going to shoot it, but now you kind of have to be. Our guys are the best. Um, you know, I've never heard of one of our guys complain about him taking shots and all that. You know, because everybody knows, obviously, with the, you know, his ability to score. We need him to score to win. You know, I, you know, you know. I, I'll be honest. You know, you can see the frustration maybe one, once or twice a game if somebody felt like that they missed him. But that's not just Russ. That would be any of their teammates. But I mean, do they have to kind of change their mindset of looking for, you know, looking for him to pass them the ball as opposed to looking for him to put a shot? Yeah, I, I think so. Uh, you know, certainly, uh, you know, if you're given the opportunity, you know, he's probably going to shoot it. So, you know, obviously our post guys know how to get in position to rebound the basketball. So it wouldn't happen overnight. Do you see him less prone to go one on three than a couple months ago? I do. And, and you know what? Uh, you know, we uh, he catch a lot of criticism for um, obviously not passing the basketball, and um, you know, obviously we do a lot of film and 
you know, coach has done a great job of getting him to see where he's making his mistakes. And, and I really do believe this, that, you know, he's, he's become a better basketball player. And he's honestly putting the effort in to try to become a, a better teammate as far as passing the ball and getting everybody involved. He's the one guy on our team that can make everybody around him better because he draws so much attention. Mm -hmm. Is there a drill that you do to try to reinforce this? Or? No, no, we got a thousand drills. Yeah. You'll get it eventually. <laughs> <laughs> did, the, did the end of the first Syracuse game, did that place any more emphasis on late game situations for you guys in practice? Well, you know, it, it was an unfortunate situation. And what it did is it, it, it coach was able to take those guys and, and make them understand that when you're leaving a timeout, and obviously, you know, you know, we're preparing for a play that you got to execute. It. And um, you know, I think certainly, you know, Peyton Siva, you know, what we really talked about, he's matured from that. And obviously, I don't think you'll see that again from him. It's a different place than any place in the Big East to play in the dome and you know, the crowd and all that stuff. Can you do anything at all to prepare for that ahead of time? You know, I, it's crazy as this sound. We've been a very good road team in the last couple of years. I don't think the place bothers us. Um, you know, I tell you what bothers us and bothers more everybody in the Big East is that, you know, they'll sit back in the zone and you have to be able to make shots and you got to be able to get some baskets. I don't think it's so much the place. Like, our guys won't be rattled about playing, you know, in front of 32, 33,000 people. You know, we played on the biggest stage. I think what happens is that this late in the game because, uh, you know, a lot of people's legs are gone and all that other stuff. Being able to make shots against a team that's sitting back in the zone is the biggest thing for me. What about the background, though? It's such a... I don't yeah. think so. I don't think it. I don't think it'll bother us. I really don't. You know, uh, these guys. If I thought we had, you know, freshmen or sophomores that were on the wings that you know were, were new to the system and being able to shoot the basketball, I think would bother them. But those guys have played in this situation before. I mean, what is it about coach and the way he does things that to his? Why, why are these things so good on the road? Because he's had so much success on the road. And the biggest thing you talk about it's, it's so tough to win on the road over the years. Than something that he's done. I think it, I think it's mental toughness that he's instilling in his kids. I mean, you know, we just our, our guys and so many people make a mistake when um, you're in college and, and all you're talking about is how tough it is to win on the road. We never talk about how tough it is to win on the road. We just look at it as, as another game. And uh, you know, coach focuses on each, each individual team, whether it's at home or on the road. And, and certainly, uh, you know, to get a win in the Big East on the road is certainly you know it's good. But we don't we don't concentrate and say, all right, this team's on the road, this team's on this team's at home, we're gonna play these guys. We just focus in and we're able to play. Maybe not the place of Syracuse, but how much does uh, this stretch starting with Syracuse and then a, a quick turnaround against a rival game in Cincinnati kind of set you up looking into the Big East tournament? We won't um, we will not think about playing Cincinnati until Sunday evening probably. So they won't have a factor in it. And you know, um, Really, guys, I'll be honest with you, none of that stuff is uh, really matters to us as far as in coaching, getting those guys ready to go. You know, we'll just, we will approach this game. As soon as the Paul game was over, uh, we started thinking about, you know, playing Syracuse. But, you know, before we played the Paul, we, had, we never even thought about playing Syracuse at all. You coached some pretty phenomenal dunkers. What about Shane's dunk this past game? It, it was really, really good. Um, <laughs> what, what was crazy was, um, I thought honestly that they were going to call a charge on it, and I'm saying you can't call a charge on that, even if it was a charge. <laughs> you can't do that. But great dunk. And, and, and what I was more impressed is we were pressing, and Shane did a great job rotating from the back line, got a steal, and he went up and finished it. He finished at the rim, so it was pretty good. Have you seen the replays? I have not. I try to stay away from that. I don't want to watch that. Has he has he let everybody know <laughs> about how good that dunk was? You know what? Uh, <laughs> He probably has, <laughs> but you know we haven't um, we haven't discussed it much. I mean, I think uh, Sports Center did a great job of putting it on, so I'm sure Shane's probably you know take that about ten times. Now. <laughs> <laughs> the Warriors block was just about as impressive too. That that was pretty impressive. I thought uh, Kevin Ware's two blocks were as great as I've seen all year, and, and that's saying with Gorgie blocking shots like he has. I mean, he he ran both of them down, chased them down, and went and got went and got both of them. I thought they were great blocks. How do you think he's directing the point guard when he has to play? Kevin? Yeah. I think Kevin's doing a great job. And what he is, in my opinion, and I think Coach says this also, he's a situational point guard, depending on who you're playing. Um, and what I mean by that is, you know, he's not comfortable right now with somebody picking him up full court, really getting after him. 
but he's better in a half court situation where we can just run the offense and, and do those type of things. So, you know, in that situation late in the game when Peyton got in a little foul trouble, if you notice, we start putting the ball a little bit more in Russ's hand because he's better against pressure full court because of his quickness. When the half court, what does Kevin do that, that you think is I, I think he's got, I think he's got great size. I think he can see over the defense, and I think he's done a great job being there to get into the paint. Now, what he needs to do obviously is become a better finisher in there, and he will be, you know, as he gets stronger. But I think he's able. He's getting inside the paint. He's distributing the basketball, and, and he's playing his role. Speaking of finishing, it seemed like Gorgie a couple of times uh, against the ball, he would get to the rim, maybe when they're charging his, you know, that free throw line area jumper, but he didn't finish when he when he got up there. What, what do you guys do? With him? I, I just think he had a bad game offensively finishing. And if you look at the game before, he was obviously, um, he looked like Dirk Nowitzki is what he did. But I, I think this is one of those games where he just didn't play well offensively and, and certainly he'll bounce back. And do you feel like Kevin against a zone like this, Kevin can be he'll, he'll be more of a option as a backup point guard? I think so because I mean everybody obviously because of the fact that Syracuse plays zone, everybody thinks that you have to put shooters in, and I don't think obviously that's the, always the best way to beat the zone. You got to attack and you got to get the ball in the middle. You got to look to the short corner. You got to be able to drive against it. I think shooting obviously is a big part of it, but. I think uh, where teams make their mistake at is everybody thinks that, you know, in order to beat Syracuse, you have to make 10 threes. You know, I just think you got to move the basketball and you got to, um, you know, you got to be able to penetrate it also. I'll let Kevin go now and I'll get Russ to get short.